Welcome to your Canadian's Connection on Rocket Sports Radio. We are proud to be the trusted source for all things Habs for more than a decade. This is the Canadian's Connection Podcast. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Canadians Connection podcast here on Rocket Sports Radio, keeping you informed, engaged and entertained, of course. Uh, My name is Amy Johnson. I'm actually subbing in for Michael Spinella this week. Happy to be here today as your host for today's show uh, for episode 298 of the Canadians Connection podcast. Uh, Welcome. If you're a first time listener, we're glad that you're here or viewer, I should say, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, If it's the first time uh, visiting the Canadians Connection, we're happy to have you here. If you're a long time listener or viewer, welcome back. And of course, I'm pleased to be joined in the studio by my co-host, who is the founder and president of Rocket Sports. He's also the site editor for the Hockey News Montreal team site, where all of us here at Rocket Sports are contributors. And uh, his name is Mr. Rick Stevens. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back to the studio. It's been a really long time. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't at all. And um, yeah, Michael uh, off today. Um, you, you saw that picture with uh, that he took with the llamas. Everybody was wearing sun- I love sunglasses, the llamas. Yeah. including the llamas. I like the llama picture. Yeah, a lot. he forgot his sunglasses in Peru, so he had to rush back there to grab them. And- right. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> He'll be back next week. Um, but it's it's an opportune time to have you here because, of course, we're uh, this week is uh, Canadian Grand Prix, um, mm-hmm. the Montreal Grand Prix 2024, and uh, we know that you're a big F1 fan, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think is going to happen uh, with the uh, with the Montreal Grand Prix? The, the circuit, of course, it's a it's a great biking circuit. I like it as a biking circuit, but yeah, that's interrupted. Once a year, when they bring the uh, Grand Prix by um, the F1 cars, uh, Ferrari, uh, I think, is has the most wins ever at um, at the circuit, um, and um, and they're having a good year so far this year. They are now. I you know I know that the, the Canadian Grand Prix in recent, despite Ferrari having all those wins, the Canadian Grand Prix has been kind of. Lewis Hamilton's Lewis kingdom Hamilton. for a yep. long time yep. until Max Verstappen showed up on the scene a couple of years ago. Um, and then Max, Verst- Max Verstappen's just kind of run the table on the championship every year with Red Bull. But Red Bull, uh, sorry, Are Red Bull slipping? fans, but finally there is starting to be some competitiveness in the top three, four teams. Um, in F1 right now and, uh, was thrilled to see, uh, Ferrari take the win in Monaco, and we'll see if, you know, Montreal is a very different circuit. It's not that tight street circuit like like Monaco mm-hmm. is, so it's pr- much more conducive to to the Red Bull uh, Red Bull car. But we'll see if Ferrari can continue to push or McLaren. Mm-hmm. Maybe Mercedes can can Mercedes is supposed to have another round Upgrade, of upgrades. Yeah. So. We'll see, but all I want, I just want some. I want there to be a question mark for every race, race of who's going to win. I don't just don't want it to be an automatic Max Verstappen and then a, a race for a second. So, we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, that's exciting for Montreal and also exciting. Sorry, that was a complete left no, no, turn no, that's, from no, hockey, but no. But uh, I was just about to say, also exciting is that we're into June now, and that's uh, that's draft month. Draft month. Uh huh. So, um, and and we got a great guest um, today. Viva. Las Vegas. To talk about Jeff Month. <laughs> we do. Uh, Jerome Barube is here. Uh, if you're a longtime listener of the show, then you'll be familiar with Jerome. Uh, he's a, He's been a frequent guest of ours here. Uh, he's the director of scouting for Hockey Prospect. Uh, you know, the, the fine folks who put out the Black Book every year. Uh, well, he is their director of scouting and a longtime friend of the Rocket Sports crew. Uh, and he'll be with us in the second segment uh, to give us his thoughts on who, you know, the Canadians might want to take a look at in the first round with, you know, that fifth overall pick, even that late first round pick as well. He's got uh, he's got some great, great insight. Um, 
Before we get to that, of course, we're going to take you through all of the latest news, because believe it or not, there is plenty of news. Lots of news this week. Happening with the Canadians, with their prospects, uh, and and particularly just around the NHL as well. So we're going to take you through all of that before Jerome comes into the studio in segment two uh, to talk about the Canadians and their draft position. Uh, and then in the third segment, we're going to get you all caught up because we know you're busy. It's it's summer now. You're busy enjoying your summer vacations. And so you might have missed some key things that the Rocket Sports team has put out over the last week. We're going to get to all of that. Um, we're going to have our Canadians Connection question of the week for you in the third segment. And we have some great responses to last week's question from our viewers and listeners that we want to read out to you as well. Um, and really, if you, you know, if it's the big thing that we always say, this is an interactive show. So if you want the opportunity to maybe have your uh, thoughts read on the show, then we need to hear from you. And the way to do that, the best way to do that is, of course, to text us. We have our very own Rocket Sports text line. So shoot us a text at 585-3-ROCKET. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, you can simply leave a comment down in the comment section. And you can also reach out to us on social media by following at Habs Connection on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, uh, you can always send us a reply, a question, a comment there. Uh, and if you are busy gallivanting around on your summer vacation and you miss an episode, well, you can catch up with what you missed by visiting the archive at CanadiansConnection.fm. All right. So what has been happening since the last time we all met here on Canadians Connection. Well, the Eastern Conference and Western Conference finals of the Stanley Cup playoffs are in full effect. Uh, at the time of our recording today on Saturday, uh, both both series are uh, heading into Game 6 uh, with Florida leading the New York Rangers in the East, Eastern Conference final 3-2 to two in the series and Edmonton leading the Dallas Stars in the Western Conference 3-2 to two in the series. I have more um, hate towards Chris Kreider and the New York Rangers than I do the Florida Panthers, so it would be nice to see the Panthers progress, and and as well, uh, Sylvain Lefebvre yeah. and Paul Maurice behind the Florida bench. Uh, Edmonton, a bit of a surprise for me. I, I thought Dallas... Um, uh, would be would be up on the, in this series. Uh, um, Edmonton's just outscoring their goaltending problems, um, and and um, Dallas is having trouble with that. So we'll see uh, we'll see how that series progresses as well. They're making me nervous because Dallas from from October, Dallas was my pick for the Cup winner. So well, and <laughs> and um, you know, will we have a, a Canadian team uh, with a final. chance yeah. uh, to win the Stanley Cup? Hasn't been done since. 93, the Canadians, and of course the Canadians were the last um, Canadian team to be in the final, uh, that COVID-shortened season. Um, 2021. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, best of luck to all four teams. We'll see how that progresses by the time we meet again next week. Um, w- we can also mention that the IIHF World Championship wrapped up Um Team Canada, unfortunately, not getting to the gold medal round. They uh, they actually played for the bronze medal. Uh, and Caden Gooley actually got injured in Canada's semifinal game against Switzerland, which was which is kind of that's the last. Uh, Alex Lyon, also for the Team USA, went home after one game. You'd never like to see when when these guys go to play. It's great that they get to go represent their country. The last thing you want, though, is for for them to pick up an injury that they have to rehab over the summer as well. Yeah, Gooley was injured in uh, that semifinal game, blocking a shot. Um, not clear what the injury is, how serious it is, how long um, that's going to take. Um, no information uh, coming out on on that. Uh, a disappointing, uh, the Canadians played uh, fine, I guess, Team Canada, that is. Uh, the Canadians that were in the series, the Montreal Canadiens representatives, uh, showing quite well uh, on all the different um, mm-hmm. teams they were in. Um, Andre Tourney, did <laughs> did he help or hurt himself? Uh, my goodness, uh, benching uh, Connor Bedard in in overtime and and then in the shootout, he had two defensemen in there. I, I had some curious decisions, um, but. Um, 
Yes. And for Canada to walk away without a medal. Well, yeah, and, and Canada, you know the attitude. If if they're not playing for, for gold, what's the use of playing? So they, they uh, didn't necessarily show up um, in the bronze medal game against Sweden. So, um, But happy for, for the host team, for Czechia. You saw the... Um, the uh, uh, celebrations uh in in Prague afterwards um and uh, really nice to see Thomas Plakanitz of course he was the assistant uh, and assistant coach with team Czechia and winning a gold medal and wasn't able to win a gold medal in in the world uh competition as a player won one um now as a coach uh, just after his um retirement from from his playing career so that was nice and um, who knew? Sven Andraghetto. Well, I was just going to say, I <laughs> think I, I'm sure I'm thrilled for Plecky. I am, I'm beyond and over the moon thrilled for Sven Andraghetto. Darn it. Getting the game deciding goal in the shootout to take Switzerland to the gold medal round. Like that's just tremendous. As, as it was, I remember Sven Andraghetto cause he was, a. Uh, a, lear- a, a learning lesson. I remember where I was uh, for me in <laughs> I remember in this. this business in in <laughs> journalism and being in the basement um, in Hartford uh, and, and uh, seeing him in the corridor. And he had just he was placed on waivers by the Montreal Canadiens. He had cleared waivers uh-huh. um, and was down to to St. John's. And um, I, I saw him and I said, "You must be happy. Uh, you know, you, you you cleared waivers. And we're and, happy to and, see you. Uh, we're happy to see." And and he, the, the look he gave me and and I I got it. I, I immediately I got it that <laughs> that all players um not are not necessarily happy with clearing, clearing waivers. waivers. He was looking for to to a new opportunity where he would have maybe a better opportunity with another organization and and. Uh, yeah, I thought, oh, okay, I just learned something I just here. Learned- <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that made for some interesting conversations at the media dinner mm-hmm. that evening. Um, so congratulations to, to Sven Andraghetto as well. Um, Canadians news, and I should mention, uh, if you are looking each day uh, for Canadians news in between episodes of the Canadians Connection, make sure you are visiting our, our Hockey News Montreal uh, site, which is THN.com slash Montreal. There are regular articles about these types of news items as they come out. Uh, so you definitely want to keep an eye there as well. Uh, there is a report out by the fourth period, Rick, uh, that the Canadians are not going to be re-signing Tanner Pearson. Yeah, not a surprise. Um, you know, uh, uh, when he when the trade was made and uh, it was more about who was being shipped out, um, Boy, it could have been a four goalie rotation at that point. Mm. Um, and Tanner Pearson coming in, it would they would talked about leadership and and uh, how he could contribute and perhaps he could play as a, a role at center. All of those things didn't really pan out that well. So uh, Tanner Pearson will hit the free agent market, an unrestricted free agent, and see um, how he can, uh, where he can, who who will be in need of his services. Uh, Montreal Canadiens, according to the fourth period, are not interested in re-signing him. Uh, another report that is out, this is not confirmed officially yet, but a report out by TVS Sport uh, that I have to say I don't, I don't, I don't love this at all. That the Canadiens uh, rookies, apparently, are not going to participate in the rookie tournament in Buffalo, but instead they are going to host a pair of games at the Bell Centre against the Maple Leafs rookies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in in the last few years, well, there's been different incarnations of, of the rookie yeah. tournament. Um, um, there was one in, in Belleville. There was one in um, in London. London. Um, for the last few years, the, the Canadians have been going to Buffalo and typically uh, three games and playing against three different uh, teams, uh, rookie teams from... Uh, well, the Eastern Conference, Buffalo, and and sometimes Ottawa, and and, uh, and so on, Pittsburgh, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, they're going to stay at home, um, according to Tivia, uh, this um, this fall, um, and only have two games, and have two games against the same organization. It probably will be a a, 
a very different roster. Um, uh, the, that's just the way the rookie tournament goes. Like but, a split squad roster. Um, yeah, it, it will be against Toronto Maple Leafs uh, rookies, uh, both games at the Bell Center. So, um, you know, it's accessible, I guess, to local fans, um, more so than if it was held in Buffalo. Opportunity for a bit of revenue there for, for the Canadians. Um, one less game, so, um, you know, our our... Fewer rookies going to get the opportunity to be um, evaluated. Uh, yeah, um, it, it's it's an interesting interesting decision uh, if it if it goes ahead. Interesting is a is an interesting word to use there. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, on some happy news, there was a signing this past week. The Canadians actually signed forward Jared Davidson to a two year entry level contract. Um, and uh, when he spoke to the media about it, Jared Davidson uh, sounded quite excited to be back. I'm <laughs> pretty excited. Um, it's really nice to get that that figured out and um, to be back in, in Laval and in Montreal is, is exciting. Um, there's really no place to play like it in the AHL, so um, I was really happy to be back, and um, I'm happy we got it done early in the summer. Uh, Jared Davidson is, um, he was one of those uh, prospects that was a bit of a late bloomer, bypassed in the draft a couple of times. The Canadians selected him uh, in the fifth round, 130th overall in the 2022 draft. Um, he was playing on a um, an AHL contract um, last year, which uh, was a bit of a surprise to us. We, we liked uh, uh, Jared Davidson um, coming out of uh, the, the WHL, played mm-hmm. for the Seattle Thunderbirds, had a terrific se- His final season um, was terrific with uh, 82 points in, in 60 games. And then he was a powerhouse in the playoffs for the Thunderbirds, uh, 23 points in 19 playoff games. So, um, and, and made it to the Memorial Cup. He had six points in, in five uh, games in the Memorial Cup. Um, and then... Once he got and and uh, then he went to training camp, had terrific training camp, uh, played really well, and and then I I don't well, we're mm. going to talk about JF Wool in a minute, um, and and um, you know he, I don't know what the trouble is uh, with with JF Wool, but um, early in the season he was a healthy scratch. Uh, often, often a uh, healthy scratch. Thirteen games in the first half of the season. Um, Jared Davidson played 38 games, which was uh, just over 50% of the Laval Rocket games. Now, uh, some of that was injury. He had a, an upper body injury, mm-hmm. missed six games um, early in the season, November, end of November, early end of October, early November. And then uh, the last part of the season, he was out as well with a, another um, upper body injury. Um, but once and and uh, when he was in the lineup for the first half of the season, his ice time was very limited, mm-hmm. uh, limited role, fourth line, uh, barely got on the ice. Um, as the season progressed and there were injuries and 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 things, he got a a, an, a better opportunity, promoted to the the second line, um, and he exploded. And and listen, he had eleven goals in those thirty eight games. That's third in Rocket goal scoring for rookies. Um, you just wonder what he could have done with uh, more ice time, with more opportunity, with better line mates consistently. Um, anyway, uh, for him to finally sign his Mm -hmm. uh, ELC, congratulations to him. Congratulations to him for his patience, for his perseverance. Um, and I, I hope whatever the issue was, that J.F. Wool had, that he's gotten over it, and, and we'll see a lot more of Jared Davidson this coming season. Well, in that same media availability, uh, Davidson also talked a little bit about his personal goals and and the team goals uh, for this coming season. So maybe that'll shed some light on how he's thinking. I think I want to be a big part of, uh, of the Laval team this year, kind of be um, on the offensive side, kind of be relied on in more situations. Um, and hopefully maybe get a couple games with the Canadians this year. That's my personal goal as a, as a team with Laval. I'd like to make the playoffs. We didn't make it this year, and it's, it's hard watching um, other teams. They're still playing right now. He's a very competitive guy, mm-hmm. um, high-compete level. Um, he was um, 
an, a, an alternate captain in in uh, Seattle. He has leadership um, abilities. Um, he 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 plays with a bit of an edge. He'll, he'll give you some grit um, and just a lethal shot. Um, so I. Yeah, I, I agree with him. Love to see, <laughs> love to see him play a big role. Yeah, uh, help uh, the Rocket towards the playoffs, and and uh, if he got a couple of games with the Canadians, uh, that wouldn't hurt either. That'd be all right as well. Um, moving on to more Canadians news, uh, Doctor Carey Price. Mm-hmm. Yes. Make sure you use that. Dr. Carrie Price uh, awarded this past week with an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. From the University of Northern British Columbia. So congratulations, Dr. Price. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Price has won a heart. He's won a Vezida, won a Ted Lindsay, won a Masterton. Um, he's won a, an Olympic gold medal. Um, this is, I bet you this means a lot to him, uh, getting this honorary, or de- honorary degree from UNBC uh, on Friday. Um, and, and, and for his, his community work, um, his parents were there and I'm sure it meant a lot to them, uh, too. And his family, um, big congratulations to Dr. Carrie Price. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. So let's kind of shift gears a little bit and, and just talk a little bit about some prospects, uh, starting with, before we get to the Canadians prospects already in the organization, uh, we are, of course, each week taking a look at things happening surrounding this upcoming NHL entry draft taking place at the end of this month. Uh, Corey Pronman released his 2024 draft rankings this week. Yeah, he did. And, and before we get to, I, I'm, I'm going to play that just because I like hearing uh, when we talk about prospects. We, oh, yes. Yeah. You want to talk about Yes, yes. It's time for the Rocket Report. The Rocket Sports Media team is your premier source for information about the Laval Rocket, the AHL affiliate of the Montreal Canadiens, as well as Habs prospects playing in the CHL, NCAA, and leagues around the world. Bookmark THN.com slash Montreal to follow our comprehensive coverage of Canadians prospects. Who is that professional voice actor? I have no idea. Well, um, <laughs> Corey Pronman, um, and, and each, uh, it seems each week, uh, the athletic, either Pronman or Wheeler, uh, puts out something a little different. This is uh, Corey Pronman's list, ranking list, not a mock. Um, and, um, I found interesting here where he said that, um, uh, this is kind of, let me just read it. Uh, so I quote him, Corey Proman says, this looks like an average draft class right now. Um, Celebrini is, is, is not in the Connor Bedard tier, uh, but he's not be- uh, far behind and could be a, an elite two-way center. So he's he's ranked these and and also um, you know noted whether they're elite, um, whether they'll be an all-star, whether they'll be a top of the line uh, top of the lineup uh, kind of player. Uh, so how he ranks them um, in his list. And again, this is not a mock. Macklin Celebrini, of course, at number one. Uh, Levshunov at two. Yakemchuk at three. Saleev. At four, uh, Zev Boom. At five, G. Are we talking about defensemen here? <laughs> there's, there's four of them in a row. Uh, Berkeley Catton is the next um, forward after Celebrini. At six, uh, he has Beckett Seneca at seven. Uh, Demidoff uh, down at eight. Uh, Zane Perek uh, still in the Memorial Cup uh, with Saginaw at nine, and Caden Lindstrom. Um, medicine hat at 10 that is um that is Corey Proman's uh top 10 list of his top 129 prospects and that's rankings again just to repeat that that's rankings not a mock of who's going to take at those positions correct um all right now switching gears to Laval uh we have said for a while you know all has been quiet on the Laval front, particularly in terms of the coaching status, uh, all, all of the coaches being up for renewal this summer. Well, uh, the wait is over. Laval re-signed Jean-Francois Uhl to a three-year contract extension, uh, also re-signed all of the assistant coaches, Martin LaPerriere, Marco Marciano, and Charles Genot. Um, so the only vacancy, Rick, is is the one that's left by Buckberger, who... who we talked about um, 
a week or so ago that uh, he has gone uh, back to Alberta. Uh, so a, a three-year contract extension and and in his press availability, J.F. Wool uh, gave a kind of a an indication of, of how he hopes or plans to approach the upcoming season. Uh, we'll, we'll see where we're at, but there's a, there's a middle, middle ground that we're going to uh, reach. The, uh, the organization is aware of it. I'm aware of it. And, uh, you know, we want to, we want to make sure that, uh, that we do, uh, you know, put a, a really good product for, for our fans in Laval, which are very important to us. So we'll, I'm, I'm pretty positive that we'll find a middle ground in, uh, in, in getting the right players. What he's talking about, if, um, let me just preface this. Um, you, you, if, if you follow some of the mainstream, some very good um, mainstream report, Montreal Canadiens beat reporters, um, you'll, you'll hear one impression of, of J.F. Wool, how he coaches and, and all of that. Um, and, and, you know, I respect the, their coverage of the Canadians. Um, but I think you should understand that, um, you know, they may drop in at training camp. Uh, they may find their way out to Plas Bell when, you know, David, like David Reinbacker gets in, in mm-hmm. um, the lineup for his first a- a- AHL game. And they may attend a press conference when a major thing like uh, the coach gets renewed. Uh, but otherwise, they're not paying attention to Laval all that much. Um, so their impressions of uh, J.F. Wool and how he coaches and, and all of that may differ wildly uh, from ours. Um, you know, I, 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 I watch every uh, Laval Rocket game and I do the least <laughs> for our Laval Rocket coverage. Amy, you, you manage uh, the Laval Rocket uh, coverage. Um, Chris G is in the building in Plas Bell, we have the the AHL guru in in Patrick Williams. So our coverage of the AHL is pretty comprehensive, and uh, we're able to to throw ideas and, and impressions and things uh, back and forth between each other on Slack to to really understand what's been going on. And what has been going on is JF Wool is um, uh, he's a coach that loves his veterans. He loves 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 his veterans. Anytime he gets to tell you about it, he will tell you uh, that you can win. You will win if you have a, a veteran, um, heavy, uh, a veteran, uh, yeah, a veteran heavy laden lineup. And and he spoke about that in the his end of season presser. Um, he spoke out in in favor of of uh, you know he talked about uh, well they didn't make the playoffs this year. Well, we had a young lineup. Uh, and he said in this press conference, if you if you listen to the full press conference, that uh, we had a good run in the playoffs uh, two years ago, but that's because we had an older team. Um, and and um, you know a play a playoff uh, a a team with younger players call it a lesser roster. Um, he's he's very much in favor of his um, his veterans. He plays his veterans. He prioritizes. His veterans, um, and oh, by the way, uh, AHL folks in the AHL, if you're listening, can we please have ice time? Can we please <laughs> have a, a simple stat as player ice time? Yeah. Um, we're getting edge stats in in the NHL, and we can't have ice time in the AHL. Um, anyway, so what he's talking about, all of that is background. All what he's talking about in this clip is. Uh, middle ground and that is uh, there's a push pull there is a real push pull uh between those guys um the kent hughes and jeff gordon saying listen we've got a we got a ton of of draft picks coming in we've got an influx of young talent we need to um we need to develop these guys they have to be given ice time they have to be put in challenging situations face-offs at the end of the game um, you know, uh, special teams assignments, all of those kinds of things. And you got, you got uh, J.F. Fool who has a mindset uh, that you can't win unless you have veterans uh, in key positions in the lineup. Uh, so he says he understands that there's a middle ground. However, and we've heard him say this dozens of times, we have to put out a good product for fans in Lavelle. That's important to me, he says. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
that's the other part of JF's mindset is that fans won't be interested in um, anything but local players. And, and particularly, they'll like local uh, veterans. Um, he doesn't get that, that um, fans will come out to see uh, a David Reinbacker or a Logan Mayu or a Sean Farrell or an Emil Heineman or a Jakob Dobas. Um, he thinks that, that, that fans can only be interested in uh, local players and veteran players. Um, so you feel this real push-pull. So what's going to happen this coming year? Well, um, listen, there's going to be more and more and more uh, young players. He's already said he's going to have a problem if um, if the the three the three players at center are going to be young players, he said, can't do that. Not my lineup. If you look at what's coming in, and if you're counting in the Florian Jack guys, uh, there's going to be an issue. Um, so either what's going to happen here? Either uh, JF Wool is going to be dragged, kicking and screaming to play uh, the young players, the prospects, or uh, maybe what's going to happen is that that the organization is going to continue to just work around him. And and what does that mean? Well, uh, we heard JF say um, a year or so ago, uh, development occurs in practice, and it occurs when the development team, um, all the the development, Paul, by all of them, uh, Adam Nicholas, come in and run practice. And you you we've saw that so many times this year where. Uh, the Laval Rocket coaching staff would just be standing on the sidelines and the development crew was running running practices. So we'll see what happens. Um, if if, if uh, J.F. Wool is able to adapt, um, he said he's learned more as, as, as a coach um, and, and that he's a better coach. Um, he, he's, he likes that he's popular with his player. Interestingly enough, the Laval Rocket put out a video um, and I think the the video footage was captured uh, during the end of season pressers uh, from the players, um, and it. But it was it was a compilation of uh, we love our coach, we support uh, JF Wool, and the video contained um, uh, clips from Gignac, Bisson, Bork, Stevens. Uh, these are veteran players. Um, I, uh, one more, one more, and I'm, I know I'm rambling here, but one more piece of information. If you don't think um, that that the veterans have priority in a JF Wool lineup, all you have to do is search out the Toby Bisson clips. Um, and Toby Bisson felt that he could say that, felt that he was he he was in a friendly culture to say that. And what he said was, "I don't like." I don't like veterans being uh, sidelined for young players. We remember at the end of the season that the Canadians sent um, the, uh, pl- players from uh, the Montreal lineup. You had Justin Barron and Jaden Struble and Logan Mayu had been who had been called up for that final game. Sent them down to help, and they displaced um, you know and all Olivier Gallipo and. And why wouldn't you? Um, and that didn't sit well with Toby Bisson, and he felt um, uh, empowered enough to say uh, that he didn't like it. Now, I came down from management. Hey, you better you better walk that back, uh, Toby Bisson. But that gives you a sense of the the culture, the attitude, um, the the veteran uh, veterans run things in um, in Laval, and and I would be. I'd, I'd say, J.F. Wool, make sure your leadership roles go to your young players, and, and that can help to turn that culture around. Absolutely. Um, and Sorry, did I, <laughs> did I go on too long there? Um, I, I think that, and, and we'll talk about uh, that. You mentioned the coaching vacancy um, uh, as a result of Kelly Buckberger uh, leaving too. Uh, in this press conference, um, uh, J.F. Wool said, uh, there's no rush. Uh, nothing's happening until September. Uh, so there's no rush in, in adding uh, um, a new coaching uh, member. And, um, well, um, you can wait, but, but the, the pool, the coaching pool, is, um, is diminishing. And uh, so I think, I think they better get on that road. So now I will shut up completely and, and let you. You're the expert here. I was I was going to move on to the next thing on the agenda. We're, that's <laughs> all right. Um, 
So yes, we'll we'll wait to see this summer who uh, who JF will names to replace uh, Kelly Buckberger. That is the only coaching question left uh, to be to be settled this off season. Um, the Memorial Cup, uh, in terms of the CHL, is uh, underway, and the final is to take place on Sunday. It will be the London Knights versus the Saginaw Spirit, uh, kicking off at seven thirty p.m. Uh, London has. Uh, Probably not surprisingly, just been an absolute force. London Knights are a powerhouse. They have been this this season. They plowed through the uh, OHL playoffs, uh, winning the OHL championship. Uh, on the way, they defeated the the Saginaw Spirit in the in the Western Conference Final. Uh, so this will be a rematch, a one game rematch of of that. And and uh, London won the. Um, the round robin game, let's call it, in in the Memorial Cup against Saginaw, uh, but it was close early in that contest. Um, Saginaw has well, uh, uh, they have Owen Beck on, on their on their team, um, and and uh, Zane Perak and uh, Michael Misa and and, and others, uh, and and they're the host team. They've they've got the home crowd uh, behind them, so it'll be it should be a great game. Owen Beck has been a force uh, in this tournament. Um, two goals, an assist for three points plus three in four games. Um, Friday night against Moose Jaw, um, he was fourteen for seventeen at the faceoff dot, uh, dominating there. And um, so this this will be uh, an interesting. Uh, probably the the best uh, final that we could have hoped for uh, for the Memorial Cup. Going along with that, the OHL has announced their 2023-24 All-Star and All-Rookie teams, and Owen Beck finds himself on one of those as well. Yeah, I think that uh, Canadians fans kind of take Owen Beck for granted and say, you know, uh, defensive forward, but he, he has uh, contributed offense, especially after the trade midseason to, to Saginaw. Uh, important mem- member of that team, um, carrying them, helping to carry them to the the memorial. Uh, well, um, they're through the OHL finals, and then as hosts, they're in in the Memorial Cup. But but through this, um, through to the final, um, I think I think Owen Beck is going to be um, w- looking to make his mark at training camp in the fall. Absolutely, I I think he definitely will do that. Um... And one more prospect to talk about, a name you maybe haven't heard as much, but Windsor Spitfire defenseman Daniil Sobolev uh, heading over to the KHL. He has signed a two-year contract with Spartak Moscow. This will be interesting to see what this means. Uh, Daniil Sobolev, uh, a fifth-round pick in 2021 uh, by the Canadians, and um, he he has really become a... Um, a physical, uh, edgy uh, defenseman, um, and um, it. What does this mean for the Can- the Canadians? Still have his rights for one more year, so um, will they? Will they continue uh, to to exercise him as uh, and and keep him in the fold? Or with the abundance of of defensemen, did he see the writing on the wall and has now chosen to um, to to continue his his uh, progression in the KHL that's we'll we'll keep an eye on that uh, don't forget as we mentioned you can find all of our content both about the Canadians and their prospects that's AHL ECHL junior hockey NCAA uh, all of it you can find that at the hockey news Montreal team site uh, that's at thn.com slash Montreal uh, and um, of course, when you're looking for information about the QMJHL, uh, you can find our English language coverage of the Q at THN.com slash QMJHL. Um, with draft month being here, it also means that uh, as of today, we're exactly uh, a month away from free agency. Uh, and, and with free agency, with the draft, we start talking about trades and things that could be happening in the next month. And there is a report from Pierre Lebrun that there are several teams, including the Canadians, who have called Carolina to inquire about Marty Natchez. Uh, and in fact, Ray, uh, Ray Ferraro and Darren Dreger on the Ray and Dregs podcast touched on this subject this week. Uh, and, and here's what Darren Dreger had to say about the Canadians being interested in Natchez. 
there's more and more percolating around Marty Natchez and the possibility of trade, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, we know that he's asked out probably more than once, to be fair. Um, you know, he's got some contract issues moving forward. And there's some family influence. <laughs> his dad has been pretty vocal with his discontent of how he's being utilized in Carolina. Yeah. Hey, Dad, just watch the game. That's my first point to this whole thing. Dad, just watch the game. Okay, so now analyze the player for us um, because there will be no shortage of suitors for Natchez. Um, the Montreal Canadiens, I believe, are, are right up there with a level of interest. So before we get uh, the analysis from from Ray Ferraro there, um, we have both Darren Drager and Pierre Lebrun saying that the Canadians have expressed interest to the Carolina Hurricanes um, about this player, about uh, Marty Nick, Nick just um, and, and and why not? He's a young, dynamic player, just hasn't uh, found his footing uh, in Carolina, um, but. The Canadians would be a long would be in a long list of of uh, teams that that uh, would be inquiring. Uh, keep in mind that uh, Don Waddell is no longer in Carolina to uh, negotiate with. Uh, in the interim, uh, it's Eric Tulski, and and we'll see how that affects um, that affects things. Um, I kind of be on board with this uh, if somehow it included um, uh, Mike Matheson, whatever that package. Um, and that might be of interest to uh, to a Carolina. Um, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Absolutely. So here is uh, Ray Ferraro's response to Drager about uh, his his analysis of Marty Nakish. This kid is a electric puck transporter. When he gets the puck on his stick and he's got room, it's really like he's exciting. Yeah, yeah. He can finish. He can shoot. He can make a play. He's got good size. And there is a level of inconsistency to him that leaves you wanting most games. So, um, yeah, what, why, what's the reason for that inconsistency? Is it compete level? Is it, um, you know, somehow um, he's not able to, to ramp up um, his effort each and every time? Could that change with a, a change of, of uh, team? Um, but all of those, you know, you, you hear the words dynamic, you hear the words electric, um, and, uh, goal scoring and, and, uh, you know, the age kind of fits into what the, the Canadians are trying to do too. So, uh, this could be an interesting, um, interesting acquisition. Well, particularly Drager then took it a little bit further and in Drager's eyes, um, Montreal is at a when we're talking about the rebuild in Montreal. Drager has a a bit of a he's out on the limb out on the limb a little bit about his opinion of where the Canadians are at in that process. It does make some sense too, and I'm connecting him to Montreal. I'm not saying it's going to go down. It's just that's the type of piece that you'd expect Ken Hughes would want to add, right? Because the rebuild is over. It needs to be over in Montreal. They've they've got to turn that corner and at least nibble at an Eastern Conference playoff spot as early as next season. Otherwise, the market in Montreal, as you know well, Ray, the fan base is going to turn. They're going to go, okay, enough of this. <laughs> and, you know. Well, but, yeah, it's the type of move where you start to offload some of your future capital for something closer to today. Right. Yeah, I agree with uh, with what Ray said, said there. The Canadians are building all kinds of uh, draft capital, draft uh, picks, uh, young prospects, um, that, um, that as they get closer, they're going to want to package those, uh, and bring in, um, players who can help right now. Um, I, I don't think uh, declaring <laughs> emphatically that the rebuild is over because fans have, of uh, run out of patience. I understand that, that fans are, um, are are anxious uh, to to move this thing along, and and um, you know, uh, Kent Hughes and and Jeff Gordon have been doing things to advance the rebuild, uh, bringing in um, an Alex Newhook or a Kirby Doc, um, using some of that draft capital, and I expect them to do exactly the same thing at um, the draft again, uh, or or uh, this summer uh, to advance the rebuild. 
Um, to to say that it's completely that the Canadians fan, fans are out of patience, um, we're getting there. But I don't, I don't know that I I would uh, necessarily be ready to say the rebuild uh, is over and full steam ahead and and go start adding free agents and all that. I I, I don't think Canadians fans. Um, I think they're smarter than that. I I actually think that they are as well. In fact, I know they are. We hear on our YouTube channel uh our youtube channel page all the time in the comment section there are a ton of uh, viewers and fans who constantly tell us no we want them to do this right um yes we were anxious to get to that place where the team is actually contending but let's not make stupid decisions in the interim just to get us there faster if we're going to go through the pain let's go through the pain the proper way um, and I actually will give Ray Ferraro full credit because what he said after this clip ended and then he went on to to basically tell Dreger, no, I don't think the rebuild is over in Montreal because if 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 Dregs, if you want the Canadians to contend and get into the playoffs, who in the Eastern Conference is coming out? Who in the who in the division is coming out to make room? Like who who is who are the Canadians going to displace? Um, particularly when there's teams like uh, Buffalo or Ottawa, or uh, I think you had even Detroit. mentioned, he said Detroit, who are, as he said, still a half step ahead of the Canadians in this process. So I agree with Ferraro on this one. I think it's a reach by Dreger. Maybe Dreger's the one who's impatient with the rebuild at this <laughs> point, um, because I don't think, I think they need one more season before they're really. Yeah. And, and, be competitive. Uh, yes, be, be competitive. Be, uh, you know, um, um, but move be realistic. Up. But um, yeah, to to jump from fifth worst in the league into a, a playoff spot is is a pretty giant leap. And and yes, you're leapfrogging a whole other uh, set of teams who've been at this rebuild maybe a little bit longer, and That's right. and who have their sights set on the playoffs as well. We will see what happens. Marty Natius could be an interesting one. We'll see how that unfolds. Uh, the NHL awards, oddly, still continue to be announced piecemeal <laughs> week after week. Uh, this week, uh, the Lady Bing winner was announced. Uh, speaking of the Carolina Hurricanes, Rick, it was one of their players. It was Jacob Slavin, and and um, I've said this before that uh, as a, a um, an editor for the Hockey News uh, for the Montreal Canadiens site, uh, we were asked to um, to oh, a month or so ago to make our uh, votes uh, known, and I had picked Jacob Slavin, um, I, you know, just because partly because he's a defenseman, and and uh, Lady Bing, and and being able to be an effective uh, player and take few penalty minutes is tough as a forward, even tougher as a defenseman. So um, this is, uh, again, I, this is a, an award that I agree with. Uh, Seattle, the Kraken, named their new head coach. Of course, Dave Haxtall, no longer uh, the bench boss in Seattle. Uh, naming Dan Bilesma the new head coach of the Seattle Kraken on Tuesday. What I find fascinating about this is Dan Bilesma is still currently coaching in the AHL. He uh, is the head coach of the Coachella Valley Firebirds, um, and they've got the he's got them deep into the playoffs once again. Uh, in fact, uh, he flew to Seattle for the press conference this week and immediately hopped back on a plane to get back to Coachella because he had to get his team ready for the conference finals. Uh, so uh, Dan Bilesma has done a tremendous job in the AHL, uh, and uh, I'm actually pleased to see him uh, return as a head coach in the NHL. Last time he was a head coach in the NA NHL was uh, 2017. So with uh, Seattle deciding on their head coach, that leaves just one NHL team uh, without a head coach, uh, being the San Jose Sharks. The coaching carousel is is slowing, um, and uh, that's going to also have a ripple effect uh, on the AHL. And uh, so get busy, Lavelle. That's right. Uh, Rick had mentioned just a moment ago that Don Waddell uh, no longer in Carolina uh, for negotiations for Marty Natchez. Uh, that's because Don Waddell has moved on to the Columbus Blue Jackets, where he's been named... Uh, the president of Hockey Ops and and the GM, wearing a lot of hats, um, and uh, former president of Hockey Ops, John Davidson, serving as his senior advisor. 
Yeah, I thought that was uh, John Davidson taking a step back and now reporting uh, to Don Waddell. Um, and we had uh, we had talked about that this was going to happen on last week's show, that um, we were expecting this to happen. It has. Uh, Don Waddell did a very good job in, in um, Carolina. And uh, so now uh, he will try to do the same thing with uh, Columbus. Now, don't forget, this coming season, the Arizona Coyotes are not going to be participating in the NHL season. It will be the Utah Hockey Club uh, instead. And owner Ryan Smith hinting that they have, they're whittling down the choices for what the team name is going to be. They've got it down to four. Yeah, they put out that long list of, I don't know, 20 names, 30 names. 20. Yeah, yeah. and um, with some very odd choices yeah. indeed in there. Um, and Ryan Smith was on um, uh, on a podcast and said, uh, quote, I think the Mammoth is up there. Yeti is up there. It should be good. So uh, you knew that Yeti was going to be a, a popular choice. Uh, I've said it before. Team names should end in S. Uh, I like the Outlaws, which is apparently um, uh, there was a Salt Lake City poll that ran and Outlaws is is near the top of the list as well. Uh, as is Black Diamond. So um, I, whatever the name, I, I, it's still going to, they'll, they'll probably operate as as uh, just the U, Utah hockey uh, this season, and they'll take a year to work on the all branding, the, brand, all the yeah. branding logo, the, the jerseys, all that sort That's of thing. Right. All right. Well, this is a good time for us to take our first break here on the Canadians Connection podcast. Uh, you're going to hear a, a Terrific offer for our listeners and viewers from DraftKings. Um, and then when we come back, uh, we are going to invite Jerome Berube into the studio. He's the director of scouting for Hockey Prospect. Uh, and he is with us today to talk a bit about the Canadians' two first-round selections and some thoughts he has on who the Canadians could target. Um, in fact, he names three targets that should be in the Canadians draft sites later this month. You're not going to want to miss this interview, the next in our series of draft preparation exclusives. So stay with us. You're listening to the Canadians Connection podcast on Rocket Sports Radio. We are this close to crowning the Stanley Cup champion. And with the action heating up on the ice, it's even hotter at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. New to DraftKings? Listen up. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to 1500 bucks. Just deposit at least 5 bucks, and you'll get a bonus bet back equal to your first bet if it doesn't hit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. That's code THPN for new customers to get a no-sweat bet up to 1500 bucks if your first bet doesn't hit. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. One no-sweat bet per new customer. Issued as one bonus bet based on amount of initial losing bet. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash ice for eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. Welcome back to the Canadians Connection podcast here on Rocket Sports Radio. Uh, I am Amy Johnson, in case you were wondering. Uh, you can, of course, find me on Twitter if you'd like to follow me there. Uh, my handle is at Flyers Rule. Don't worry, Habs fans. Don't let the Flyers thing scare you in there. Uh, and, of course, with me in the studio is our president and founder of Rocket Sports, the editor for THN.com slash Montreal. That's the Hockey News Montreal team site. Uh, his name is Rick Stevens. You can fo follow him on Twitter at Rocket Sports. And, of course, you can follow this podcast at Habs Connection on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, and don't forget, if you haven't done so already, whether you're listening to the podcast on your favorite podcast uh, app 
Or if you're watching us on YouTube right now, just take a second if you haven't done so already and tap the subscribe button. Uh, leave us a comment. Leave us a hit the like button if you're able to do that or or give us a five star review. Leave a, some positive feedback. All of those things really help us to reach even more Habs fans. Uh, and we would really appreciate that. All right. It's uh, it's the good stuff. It's what you've been waiting for. Jerome Berube back with us today. He's, of course, the director of scouting for Hockey Prospect, uh, an independent scouting service who provides player evaluations to NHL and CHL teams. Uh, and every June, you might know it as as the Bible, basically the draft Bible, but they publish their NHL draft black book containing uh, extensive and exclusive scouting reports, draft rankings, and so on. And so Jerome is going to come into the studio here in just a moment, and we are going to talk about uh, both of the Canadians' first round draft selections and some targets that Jerome thinks should be on the Canadians' radar uh, before the draft black book and Hockey Prospects' final rankings publish on or about June 10th. So without further ado. All right. Well, next up in our series of exclusive interviews, special guests joining us here on the Canadians Connection in the run up to the 2024 NHL draft. We have another scouting expert joining us this week, uh, a guy that we go back a long way with, uh, proud to call him uh, not only a friend of Rocket Sports, but just a friend in general. And he is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, about prospects. Welcome back to the program, Jerome Berube. He's the director of scouting for Hockey Prospect. They are, of course, an independent scouting service that you can find at hockeyprospect.com, the publishers of the Draft Bible, otherwise known as the Black Book. Uh, Jerome, welcome back. It's it's great to have you here again. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for, for having me on again this year. <laughs> We le- we very much enjoy having you on, particularly this time of year as we're counting down the days now uh, to to the draft. And in fact, uh, with with today's show being on June first, it's officially draft month. Um, and so I know that means it's a busy time of year for for you guys at Hockey Prospect. Um, if you can, before we kind of get into the nitty gritty about what you know what what the first round of the draft really looks like and and certain members of this draft class. Um, could you just take a moment to tell us just a bit about Hockey Prospects scouting service, uh, what it is that you guys do, and, and what really kind of sets you apart from from your competitors? Uh, well, I mean, for people who don't know, uh, the company has been, it's our, basically our 20 years, 20 years anniversary this year. It was created in 2004. Congratulations. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I have not been there for 20 years, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, you know, this was created by Mark Edwards, who is used to, to coach, like he coached guys like, uh, he coached Alex Pacangelo, um, when he was, uh, 15, 15 years old mm-hmm. on his, uh, OHL dr- draft year. So, and then he moved to, you know, create his business on the side and then it's, you know, it became what it has become today. So we uh, basically covered the NHL draft um, from from August to June, basically. So we have July off. Um, <laughs> much um, much needed July off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we covered the NHL draft. Um, obviously, the people have known us for you know the black book, which, as you call it, the, the Bible of the. Uh, NHL draft, um, and that's what we do. Like we uh, we go to games during the year. Um, the last few year, few years, we have been using a lot more video uh, to help to help us, you know, um, see more see more players, see more games of those players. So it's now it's now it's like a, a mix of both of like live viewing and and video viewings and. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, the, in the book, you have like our, our profiles. We have like our we have our grades, or ratings that every player gets, uh, the scouting reports, and obviously the, the the rankings that we have. That is, you know, our rankings are pretty similar to what like an NHL team do. Like we don't rank three hundred players. We rank we have like about one hundred players, one one hundred five players, maybe. That we rank, um, you know, NHL team list. They they tend to have about the same number of players on their list. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. Well, you guys do a great job and, uh, year after year, your lists are, um, you know, we, we talk about the number of, of, um, hits that you get in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but, but I think it's important to know that, um, you know, an NHL team, um, NHL teams differ and their lists are different from each other and maybe different from, from you. And I just thought before we talk about the 2024 draft, if we can take a peek back to the 2023 draft and, um, I guess the Canadians went against the grain. It was a it was a forward heavy draft uh, last year, but the Canadians went in kind of a different direction. And um, I think you had the the top two defensemen as uh, Simashev and and Rhinebacker. And um, I just I give you a chance to talk about the Canadians going with Rhinebacker in in last year's draft. Yeah, I don't know if they really went off the board. Like I think it was pretty obvious i think if you re- even if you read the black book last year there was like a quote from hell then it was pretty obvious Montreal was really high on ryan biker mm-hmm. it, so it was not a huge you know secret back then that was like a, a quote for the, from the combine i believe um so not a huge secret and you know if you look at past nhl playoffs those big mobile defense are so useful the, those guys that can play, um, you know, twenty five minutes a game. They're mo- are mobile. They can move parts. They don't have to be crazy high end offensive player to be really, um, you know, important for for a team. If you can get your ends on those guys, you know, you they're they might be more important for your team and your team's success than, you know, your this flashy scoring winger uh, that, you know, people might really, you know, fell in love with because he's like, he's flashy and he's, right. he's, he's, he's great for highlight real goals. Um, you know, those defensemen that can play a lot of minutes, they're, they're so important. And I think um, if you look at, you know, Vegas, the way their defense played last year, um, Tampa Bay before St. Louis before very um, I mean this league is a copycat league like the <laughs> it, if something works a team's going to copy it so um, but you know you you see it with like um, um, smaller defensemen a lot less of those small defensemen are getting drafted now um, like I I mean from 2017, 2018, I think half, you know, there's like a drop off of like almost 50%. So this is where you see like uh, teams copying like the, the Blues of 2019, the Tampa Bay, the, the Vegas. Colorado mm-hmm. was a bit of a um, bowl, but they have like a, a franchise defense spending and kill a car. So, mm-hmm. so that, that works for them. But um, yeah, so for Ram Biker, not a huge, not a huge surprise that Michelle went uh, with him. So, um, be, just before we uh, we talk about the Canadians, the Canadians, as everyone knows, are picking fifth overall. Um, I thought we'd talk about um, pick three players uh, near the top that we can uh, talk about, and um, and I'll let Amy start that. But before we get there, we just want to stress that. Um, your rankings aren't out, aren't finalized yet. Um, I think the, I saw the black book will be out in about 10 days thereabouts, um, with, with your final, um, rankings. Um, we're, we're looking at, uh, for, for any of the, um, uh, fans, uh, and listeners that we have that are interested, um, one of the nice things that you do is you put out, um, for free your top 32 and the last, Uh, top 32 ranking that you have on the website hockeyprospect.com is as of January 22nd of this year kind of the mid-season rankings Um, but so we're we're not talking about a mock here we're just talking about guys who who may be available um, near the top Um, and we've we've picked out three to to talk about and uh, I'll let Amy uh, choose one of those guys uh, to introduce to you Absolutely. Well, um, 
So we're talking about that Canadian's fifth overall pick. They find themselves drafting in the exact same position as they did last year. Um, and I guess one of the first ones uh, that, that we could ask you about in terms of, of that fifth overall slot would be Caden Lindstrom. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's, there's not many players that have like the, the toolkit that he has. Um, you're talking about a six foot three, six foot four center that skates uh, really well. Um, it's also a guy like as a scout, I think you you want to look at guys that make um, improvement from year to year. And you know, I, I watched this from last year, thought he was pretty good, but then I didn't expect last year that I would be talking about Kenan Lindstrom as a you know he was our number two ranked player in you know November, December, January. So um, I didn't really expect that last year. So, but that's. As a scout, you you want to see that. You want to be surprised by players that really make, you know, big improvement in their games. And you know, for him, was the the size obviously was there. The skating was always there. Uh, I think the the, sh- the shot got better. Uh, his hands got better, and now he's you know he's a very dynamic one on one player. Um, he can score from anywhere in the offensive zone, and he's a really tough to tough player to play against um very very tenacious you know borderline i don't want to say dirty but yeah i'll say it borderline <laughs> dirty. um like he's just i mean it's, i think his coach said the uh you know he, he kind of reminded him of eric lindros <laughs> so okay. i mean not not like plays with an edge or really yeah yeah comparable or really tough to to make because People get in their head that you know this is gonna be like a, a number, a top five player in the NHL when he's in his prime. Like I don't think that's gonna be the case, but um, you know, physically, he's got that mean streak that you know Lindros had back then. Um, so I think that's what he meant by the the comparable. Um, and and it's tough to find guys with that skill level and and with that type of like main streak that he has so um um a lot of good things like he had a great first half and obviously he got hurt and i think where he goes in the, in the draft will be i think the combine will be really important for him i think uh um not only the the testing but you know uh i think they're gonna probably the team's doctor is gonna check him out he mm. like Obviously, the the first injury was a wrist injury, injury, so it is what it is. But it's mostly the back uh, yeah. issue after. But you know, if the team's doctors are like, he's good to go, and there's no issue going forward, um, I think that he probably is going to go pretty high. It's if the you know if the the team doctors are giving like a, a thumbs up, I think uh, he's going to go pretty high. So last year at this time, we were talking about um, a dynamic Russian player in Matt Vemichkov, and a lot of Canadians fans were uh, disappointed uh, when the Canadians uh, passed him and um, passed on him. And, um, and, and I think that's been, um, you know, those, those Canadians fans who were upset last year um, were even more upset when they heard that uh, the Flyers may be bringing Michkov over uh, a little earlier. <laughs> um, but that kind of leads into um, a another dynamic Russian um, player um, in uh, uh, Dimidov and and Ivan Dimidov and and um, I. I know their situations are different, and and maybe you can explain that as as you're explaining uh, the 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 qualities and the assets of of uh, Demidov. Yeah, um, I think if you compare both players, I think Demidov is a uh, a more complete player than than Mishkov. Like his his play away from the puck is much better. His effort level is much better. Um, you know he's. A, Pretty good player in the neutral zone. He he anticipates the play pretty well, and you know he has a you know a good work ethic, uh, which Mishkov doesn't really have. Um, but Mishkov is a fantastic goal scorer, um, so 
you know, what Mitch Goff will look in the NHL is it's tough to really predict mm -hmm. because he's going to play for a really tough coach. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, you know, one thing I've learned with, with that coach is if you don't play hard away from the puck, you, you don't really going to get your chance offensively. Um, no matter who you are. Yeah. Yeah. I remember back, back in, you know, early 2000 with Tampa Bay, like Vinila Cavalier was the same thing. Like he didn't really play hard enough defensively and that was a problem. And then when, when he figured that out, like when he became like a really, really complete player, like he was, he became like a, there was no issue with his coach. So I think Mishkov will have to adjust that at the initial level. Um, so back to David <laughs> Um Yeah, so a better, a more complete player than Mishkov. They have a bit of the same problem as they're not the biggest player and they're not the you know the best skater. Um, but as far uh, as far as like um, puck skills, the ends, like Lemdov is really high end. Like he's he's really fun to watch if, if you're a fan. Like his one on one game or or really strong. He's a great playmaker. I don't know if he's going to be like a fantastic finisher. Um, like I I don't think he's going to be a 40, 50 goal guy at the NHL level, but um, you know, I, I'm guessing he's going to be around a, a 30 goal uh, scorer, but um, not a high end guy to me, but the playmaking is high end and um, and obviously the the ends, the one on one abilities are, you know, elite. So to to kind of round out a, a this grouping of three potentials, uh, people who guys who have been kind of talked about in the realm of that fifth overall pick for uh, for the Canadians, um, looking at someone whose whose chatter has really picked up on him uh, over the last few months coming out of the WHL, uh, and that's T.J. Ginla. Can you talk to us a little bit about? Uh, why he is starting to make people really kind of take notice. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned with Lindstrom, like I, we always like look at players that make, you know, big improvement from year to year. And I don't know if there's like a player in there in our, that will go in the first round that make a bigger improvement than Aguila. He looked last year that you might be like a guy that goes late first, early second, uh, from what I saw. Last year, um, and then WHL, WHL, he didn't, his ice time was really low. So it's, it was tough to get a, a read on him, but, um, he played pretty well at the U17, uh, in November. So, but fast forward to this year and he's, uh, he had a pretty incredible season. Um, like he improved, his, you know, his skating got better again, his ends, uh, he's playing very, he's, you know, a lot more deceptive than he was last year. Um, playmaking got better too. Um, he always, he was always a, you know, uh, I mean, he's Jerome's son. So he was always a hard worker, mm -hmm. um, like tough to play against. He's not, he doesn't have his Jerome size. Like he's about five eleven, six feet, but he plays hard. Um, you don't, he's, um, great for checker. Um, creates a lot of his own chance by his, his work ethic um, and his shot is also uh, like really, really good. So there's a lot to like with uh, again, he's, he's personally one of my favorite players that I saw this year. Uh, and it, it was a kind of like a, a weird year where last year I, I had a ton of guys that I really like that was very that I was really passionate about this year, <laughs> not as much. And again, that was one of those guys that I, I really, uh, really pushed for, uh, you know, for us to rank, you know, pretty high. Now, the Can like last year, the, the Canadians have a, a second first round pick um, coming later in, in the first round, uh, 26th overall. 
And and who knows whether the Canadians will actually make that pick or or like um, other years where they where they've uh, engaged in a trade or not. But uh, should they make that? Well, if they make that um, second first round pick, um, maybe just toss out uh, three options that, uh, and, and we'll just let you go on this um, of of guys that the that should be in the conversation that that uh, maybe. Uh, of interest to them with that 26 pick yeah um we're, we'll stick to the whl uh Tarek parasak from prince george's could be a candidate for the Canadians at 26 um so opposed to um Iginla and Lindstrom, i didn't i didn't know who he was <laughs> i didn't <laughs> He didn't play. He didn't play in the WHL last year. Was not like at the U seventeen. So it was when I first saw him, I was like, "Okay, who is this?" Um, and then he started the year on fire. I remember, like, he was uh, the first two three weeks of the season. He like everyone was asking, "Who is this kid?" Like he, he was averaging like three point per game basically. Mm. Um, so uh, a bit of kid that came out of nowhere um, and. You know, he, he was in a good situation in Prince George. Prince George, um, they really had they really had a good team this year. So he was he had like a good supporting cast or some really good players around him. Um, and uh, so he's um, he's a really smart player. Um, he plays really well with and without the puck. Um, you know, obviously the offensive game was really flashing early on in the year, but what really stood out to me was how good how, how good he was on the PK. Like very smart, uh, in spades to play really well, um, and uh, you know, not like a fantastic skater, like more of a, an average skater, uh, but plays plays inside, which in the NHL if you. Stays, stays too much on the outside. You, you're not gonna play in the NHL. <laughs> yeah, <that's> uh, right. <laughs> like if you if you watch the NHL playoffs, like you're not gonna be successful playing yeah. on the outside. But a lot of his points, a lot of his goal comes from around the net. Um, not someone who if you look at him, his skill level really do like all. But the more the more you watch, the more you can appreciate what he can bring uh, on the ice. I think he's. He's probably going to be a guy that, you know, if he's not a top six floor, will be a, you know, a third line player, but someone who can play a bit everywhere on your roster. Um, in some way, he r- reminded me of like Tyler Tafoli, where he does look a bit ugly on the ice, but he's so <laughs> smart, so smart, and he knows how to score goals. Um, so that was kind of how I came up with that Tyler Tafoli. Uh, uh, comparable, um, so I think he's a he's definitely an option at for Montreal at twenty six. Um, not the biggest guy, but he plays hard. Um, plays in, like I said, he plays inside around the net. Um, so and you know if if you have like different player on the on your list that are pretty close, well, if you have a guy that actually. At a really good compete level, and he's super intelligent. Usually, uh, those guy will pan out. Yeah. Um, the second guy is Andrew Basha, who was a teammate of uh, Caden Lidstrom this year. Um, he's an old, he's an older guy, so he's a late birthday guy. Um, I say older because this draft class has a ton of guys that are super young. Like by super young, I mean they're born and. June, July, August, September. I've never seen a draft with so many, you know, late, not late birthday, but very young uh, birthday for this draft class. So Basha played last year uh, in the WHL. Um, very, uh, very good skater. Um, plays a uh, plays with good pace. Um, as good of a scorer as a playmaker. Um, I. I think I wish he'd play a bit more inside, like Parasak. Um, but he's got better, you know, uh, athletic tools than than Parasak. So it's a it's been close between those two all year for for us. Um, 
And um, so I don't know. I don't know if he, he, he's probably a candidate for Montreal, but sometimes I, I think of, uh, you know, it's really hard to get two teammates from one team that will end up being, you know, really good NHL players. Like, I didn't do any research on this, but it's, it doesn't happen often you have two teammates in junior and both of them, you know, become like super good NHL players. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I remember like how Algie and Richard was playing together. So like that's a dark event against what I just said. But <laughs> in, in, in general, uh, it's tough. I remember like St. John one year, I think they have three or four first rounder and you know, only one really became, you know, really good. And Jonathan Uberdo, like, um, so, um, so yeah, Basha is, a, is definitely a, a candidate. Um, really, like his skill level is pretty good. Skating, work ethic. There's a lot. There's a lot to like. Um, personal, personally, the last few viewings I had of him, he was not good. So uh, almost like a recent recency bias. Sometimes we have as a scout, like the last, mm-hmm. the last, the last of what you saw from a player. Sometimes you know sticks in your mind a bit more um but um but anyway uh, i think he's he's a pretty good candidate for 26 for Montreal. and the uh the last one um i go will not be in the whl uh marek vanneker from the ohl plays in brentford um a bit of uh i don't want to say surprise because i don't think we expected him to be um, in that range at the beginning, beginning of the year. Um, but the more we watch, the more we like, and this is a guy who really had a strong second half of the year. Um, I think he had, um, but if he had around 80 points this season, but 48 of those points were after Christmas. So a big second half by him. Um, this is someone Kane's management should know very well because he played with, uh, Florian Jackai, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of time on the same line. So I think they should know uh, a lot about him. And the um, Matt, Matt Turek uh, connection there as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we we often talk about uh, a scout, like the, the, the curve. So we want to see like the progression of players. Sometimes it's from year to year. Sometimes it's you know, from month to month, basically, um, see the players improving. Like, you're not, you're not very excited to drive a player that doesn't improve or regress during the year. So, um, Vanneker is the, is the opposite of that. Really got better as the season went on. Um, you know, he's listed at six feet, 175 pounds. My eye test tells me he's bigger than that. Uh, every time I see him on the ice, he looks, you know, he looks more like a six one, and could be some, could be around one hundred ninety pounds. I could be wrong on this, but you know, because I I don't want to call him a power forward because he's not like a six. He's not Sapkowski or Kubidak, mm-hmm. but he does play a heavy heavy game, and I think um, he's got some offense that could end up making him as a top six forward. If not, he can be a good up and down winger on your third line. Um, Skating's got to improve a bit, but, um, you know, he's a player I, I like and a player that got better uh, during the second half of the year. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, positive um, things happening with that player. So while you're here, um, I'm there's two players that I'm just curious about and I wanted to get your take on. Um, and... We've been talking a lot about uh, players from the CHL. Uh, these players are not playing in the CHL. We have Sasha Boisvert, um, he was from Trois-Rivières, uh, played in the USHL with Muskegon um, this past year, and, and next year will be in the NCAA with North Dakota. Uh, interested in what your um, your uh, analysis is of him, and also uh, another guy that I'm just fascinated by, and that's Dean Letourneau. Uh, whom is probably a project, but maybe you can t- if you have two first round picks, maybe you can take a big risk on him. 
um, six seven two twenty. Uh, played in the prep school league with St Andrews, uh, and not next year, but the year after, is slated to go to Boston College. So, um, just satisfy my curiosity and and uh, and let me know your your thoughts on these two guys. Yeah, whoever uh, obviously is a kid from Quebec, but like he's one of those r- rare Quebec kids that I didn't see play, you know, minor hockey uh, in Quebec. Like he left too too early. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he left. I think he was fifteen when he left for uh, for prep school. But so he's uh he played center this year with um, Muskegon, um, and um, or. Oh, is it Muskegon? Yeah, the, um, the yeah, Lumberjacks, the uh, Muskegon yeah. Lumberjacks. Yeah, so he plays center. Um, he is, I think his best asset is his shot. He's got a really good shot. Um, he can score from pretty much anywhere in the offensive zone. So, you know, when we look at, you know, shooting skills from players, um, you know, obviously most players can score from, you know, five feet from the net. But we're looking at, like, some shots that can score from distance. Uh, and he's one of them. He can score from, you know, the point or, you know, he can score from distance. He can, his shot is really good. So that projects well for the NHL. He's uh six foot two, but he's really raw physically. So it is a, I think going to college is really good. going to be really good for him. More, more time to train in the gym than if he was in the, in the CHL. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, he needs to get stronger. Uh, I think once he can had like like he's listed as six two one seventy four. You know, he's probably gonna end up playing at six two two hundred pound at least. So there's a good twenty, twenty five pounds still to to add for him. And that will help some of his skating too, because his skating is just average um right now. So we're hoping once, you know, uh he gets stronger that the skating will be a bit more explosive. Um and um, yeah, he's a good player. He plays hard. Uh, I he got into a few fights this year, which is a bit of a uncommon in the USHL. In the USHL, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, funny enough, like I think the first fight that I saw from him was against another kid from Quebec. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, it was a pretty good fight. Probably <laughs> the best fight I've seen all year. Oh wow! Um, yeah. So he's a, he's an interesting player. Um, I think some I can argue that he's probably probably going to be a winger at the NHL level, not a center. I think uh, there's a lot a lot of work to do with his passing game, and so I think I think his style of game will probably fit better on the wing. He's a better shooter than than playmaker, and uh, but he plays hard. He's physical. So we, yeah, I think he could be an option where the Kings, uh, where the Kings are going going to pick if he, if they still have that pick, of course. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, and Latorno, uh, you know, very uh, very tall. <laughs> uh, there's, there's not many there's not many guys in the, in the NHL that plays that you know six 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 seven. Obviously, uh, Thompson in Buffalo is the. Uh, I would say the unicorn of the, uh, but you know maybe it's a kind of a, a of a new generation uh, of athlete because I kind of see it with defensemen. There's there's a lot more six four, six five, six six defensemen that are, are super mobile. They skate like they're five foot ten, but they're six foot five. <laughs> um, you know, Siriadiev is a good example of that. You know, he has he has no business skating as good as he is. <laughs> Uh, at six foot seven, um, so Thompson, really talented player, um, skates well, um, really good passer. He's got a good shot. I think the bigger question, well, the two questions I guess I would have for him is uh, the compete level has been really up and down all year, um, but you know it's it's like is it because he plays on the in a very weak league, so. Yeah. A lot, a lot of guys on this team or that he played against, they're very small. Okay, so is it him not wanting to really hurt them? Is he, I saw one huge hit from him, and then that was it. And he plays a pretty, you know, 
passive uh, skill game, but not really, you know, a physical player. Uh, is it going to change next year when he plays in the in the USHL or maybe college? Um, it's still still not sure where he's going to play next year. It's either going to be USHL or or college. But um, so is the fact that he's going to move up, up to a level that that compete level will will be better and it's going to be tougher to play against or it's just not in him we don't know basically um so that's that's a huge question question mark for him is uh is the the compete level and obviously the the level of play that he played at this year just you know it's there's a reason why not many you know future NHL player end up playing, you know, high school hockey in Canada. It's, it's a very, it's weak, and it's really tough to project those guys for the NHL, but... Um, now, don't know, tell was, Alex Newhook that. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. I was just I was just tossing out a... Well, he did, he did play in the BCHL. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he I went mean, from so, from St. Andrews so, to, to the BCHL. So that's, technically, that's junior A, so that's... I have no problem with that. Just like the the high school level in Canada. I know typically some US, you know, some US team like Shadows and Marys, but mm-hmm. it's just any any players that whether it's in Canada or in the US that comes from high school, it's really hard. Uh, sometimes you're gonna see a player in high school you really like him, and then they're they're gonna get called up to the USHL, and you're like, that's a different player <laughs> to- totally yeah and sometimes it's it, in a good way but sometimes it's in a bad way so it's it's uh it's a i mean scouting is hard so <laughs> <laughs> well uh that's that's one of the hardest things to do is scout high school player well scouting is hard and but you guys do it uh better than most and and um every single year um th- this is just a sample of the kind of information that you'll uh, be able to read um, if you uh, grab one of the black books. I I still have on my shelf uh, physical copies of of the older black books, but of course now it's available both in in uh, digital form as well. Um, maybe uh, just uh, and, and we should say that in its current form, this enormous Bible black book. This is the last. Uh, uh, Mark Edwards has said this is the last year's going to be out in its current form, so uh, that makes this year's uh, a collectible. Um, if if you want to, uh, if folks want to get their copy, um, tell us, uh, give us an idea when it's coming out and and how they go about it. Well, when I'm not exactly sure, but I'm assuming it's got, going to be somewhere around June 10, maybe a bit before. I think, All but right. we'll see. Um, and then, uh, you can, if you want to print copy, you have to go to Amazon, uh, to get it. Um, and if you get the, the, the PDF copy, you go to hockeyprospect.com and you get it right away. Um, which, uh, depends. Like a lot of people likes the, 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 the print copy, um, cause it's like a, a physical book. Um, so we try to, uh, Try to make it happen for for both. I think the physical copy is a bit tougher to. This is like, I have no, I am not involved in this at all. But <laughs> the the making of the book uh, with Amazon is a bit more complicated, obviously. Um, so we had a, a few issues in the past, but uh, last year was perfect. So I think we we have figured that out. Um, and uh, yeah copy physical copy on Amazon and if you want a PDF and get it right away it's on on our website and obviously the book you have our our uh, scouting reports but also like our grading system or ratings and also quote from uh, NHL scout from uh, obviously their name are not <laughs> uh, it's an anonymous uh, NHL scout quote but I think this is probably the most popular uh, it's the most feedback I get, honestly, is the uh, the quotes from NHL scouts. So um, those are those are always very popular. That's uh, I skip to the to the quotes because um, 
the NHL quote, NHL uh, scout scouting quotes are they're frank. They are they are direct. Gets uh, right to the meat. Yeah, of, there's no of it, holds yeah. barred. Uh, they they tell you exactly what you think, uh, very succinctly about uh, about a particular player. So yeah, I I find those uh, amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, as we've said, the black book is just absolutely jam-packed with all of the information you're going to want to know for the nhl draft um congratulations again to jerome and the entire team at hockey hockey prospect for the work that they put in all year long to compile that information um and if you want to follow jerome on twitter i highly recommend you do so he's a he's a great follow on x twitter whatever you're calling it these days uh you can find him at jerome underscore barube b-e-r-u-b-e um and jerome we're just uh so pleased to have you back again thank you so much for taking some time out of what we know is a busy time of year for you uh to join us and and share some knowledge with our listeners here on the canadians connection Perfect. Thank you. Well, I always enjoy um, the visits by Jerome Barube. I enjoy uh, chatting with him uh, through through the year, but uh, particularly when he makes uh, his uh, once a year visit to the Canadians Connection and and shares uh, his extensive knowledge. Uh, he's been a scout for a long time. We've known him for a long time, um, and uh, the the entire team at HockeyProspect.com does a great job and and uh, provides very comprehensive uh, reports uh, from uh, on on the prospects uh, for the draft. They also do um, you know junior scouting and 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 so on they have other reports other than their their black book um, and very uh, worthy of uh, a follow on Twitter and uh, you should also check out their website at hockeyprospect.com. Absolutely. Thanks again to Jerome for being here. It was always great to great to chat with him. Uh, and of course, that brings us to this week's Canadians Connection question of the week that we want to hear your answer to. And that really relates to, you know, this is now the second time in the last few weeks that we've had a special guest on talking about their thoughts for the Canadians' fifth overall selection and the 26th overall selection. Our question to you this week is, should the Canadians retain that second first round draft selection, that 26th overall pick? at this year's draft. Should they keep it? Should they make that pick? Uh, or should they try to use it as a little bit of trade capital to sweeten a deal? Uh, we know last year Kent Hughes used some early second round picks uh, in the new hook acquisition. So could this be something that you'd like to see Kent Hughes use to to acquire a player uh, this year as well? Be sure to leave us a, either a comment down in the comment section on YouTube. Shoot us a text at 5853-ROCKET. Or drop us a reply on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Habs Connection. Um, and, uh, of course, the best responses to that question we're going to read next week on the show. Uh, and uh, before we get to your answers to last week's question of the week, we're going to take our final break here on the Canadians Connection. And uh, when we come back right after this, we're going to hear what you had to say about last week's question of the week and get you caught up on some things you might have missed uh, here at Rocket Sports. So stay with us. You're listening to the Canadians Connection podcast here on Rocket Sports Radio. The Canadians Connection is proud to be a partner of Rocket Sports Media, digital media publishers of sports and entertainment websites. Their mission is to build a worldwide network of sports fans who are informed, engaged, entertained, and connected. Learn more about RSM, its team, and its portfolio of brands at rocketsportsmedia.com. I bet you enjoy sporting your best Habs jerseys, dressing up your kids and pets in the cutest Habs gear, and showing off your decked out hockey cave or fan ink. Well, don't just show your friends, show your Habs. The Rocket Sports Media team wants you to boast your finest pictures for our global network of Montreal Canadiens fans. Include the hashtag ShowYourHabs when posting your fan photos on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Then log on to ShowYourHabs.com to see your entries, along with photos and posts from Habs fans all over the world. A proud member of the Rocket Sports Media Network. If you're a business owner looking for the perfect platform to reach a targeted audience of customers, Rocket Sports Media is the solution. 
Our global hockey community provides unmatched social media reach to an attentive demographic of sports and entertainment fans. We can provide visibility to your company, helping you to engage and leverage this prime group of potential clientele. In addition, we also offer sponsorship opportunities for fan events and featured areas of website content, giving you name and logo recognition. Visit rocketsportsmedia.com to contact us regarding this unique marketing opportunity. For the most trusted source of news, analysis, and features about the Montreal Canadiens, log in to thn.com slash Montreal. Your year-round source for anything Habs-related. That's thn.com slash Montreal. And welcome back to episode 298 of the Canadians Connection podcast here on Rocket Sports Radio. Don't forget, once again, follow us at Habs Connection on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Visit our website at canadiansconnection.fm. And we want to hear from you. Text us anytime, 24-7 on our Rocket Sports text line, 585-3-ROCKET. Uh, and in just a couple of minutes, we actually have some people who did reach out to us last week in response to our Canadians Connection question of the week. We've got some great answers to read for you. Uh, but before we get to that, just want to make sure that you didn't miss anything that we had anyone here at the team had for you this past week. Um, if you don't know, perhaps you're a new listener or viewer here at Canadians Connection. You might not know that we cover the Montreal Canadiens and their prospects for the hockey news Uh on the digital side of the hockey news, uh, the the Montreal Canadiens team site, uh, which you can find at thn.com slash Montreal. It's all of your Canadians coverage in one place. Um, and so be sure that you visit that every day in the off season and definitely during the hockey season, uh, because you'll get a ton of great content there about the Canadians and their prospects. Um, if you haven't done so already, tap subscribe uh, on your favorite podcast app if that's how you're listening. But whether or not you are watching this episode on YouTube, doesn't matter. Head to YouTube anyway and go to uh, youtube.com slash allhabs and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, because yes, you can catch the Canadians Connection every Monday on our YouTube channel, but there's also... Other great content uh, we do. Uh, Nathan and Michael do some live streams uh, through sprinkled throughout the season and even the off season as well. Uh, and I also host two different uh, weekly programs on our YouTube channel. One is called the Rocket Hockey Report, obviously covering the Laval Rocket and the prospects playing in the AHL. And the Habs Hockey Report, which is a week, just a weekly look at the some hot topics surrounding the Montreal Canadiens. So we want to make sure that you don't miss any of that, particularly as we get further and further into the, the good stuff that's going to happen in the offseason and then into the fall with training camp. So be sure to go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash allhabs. Just tap that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that you're always uh, that you get a notification right on your mobile uh, whenever we have a new video out. Um, we do polls in the community tab sometimes. We love to hear your uh, your ideas about things. So definitely a fun place and a very fun community there on our YouTube channel that we don't want you to miss out on. Um, we mentioned uh, to also subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Don't forget we're. We're your inside link to, for the Montreal Canadiens and their prospects. We're giving you a ton of comprehensive coverage. We don't want you to miss anything in any format, whether it's written, whether it's audio only on the podcast, or whether it's video content created on YouTube. We don't want you to miss any of that. And we also want to be sure that you are aware that during this offseason, um, Rick would love to hear from you if you are interested in joining the Rocket Sports team. If you think you've got something to contribute in some way, shape, or form to the Rocket Sports team, uh, then Rick, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how people can reach out if they're interested in being one of our colleagues. Reach out to me directly. Um, by email is the best. Hello at rocketsportsmedia.com. Uh, our email address, hello at rocketsportsmedia.com. Uh, tell me that you, you want to join the team. Tell me what... Uh, 
what you'll bring. Tell me how passionate you are about hockey and tell me how committed you can be for the upcoming uh, NHL season. Absolutely. Now, don't forget, we want to hear from you about this week's Canadians Connection Question of the Week. Should the Canadians retain the 26th overall pick at this year's draft? That's that second late first round draft pick. Should they keep it and use it or should they package it and use it as trade capital in some sort of big trade uh, instead? We'd love to hear your answers to that uh, because, boy, um, that could be a, it could be a very interesting scenario depending on what they decide to do with it. So send us your responses or leave them down in the comments section. Uh, but, of course, we want to make note of some really great responses we had last week about some topics and about the show last week. Um, Rick, I think you and Michael had talked a little bit about Paul Byron last week. Uh, We did. Um, Paul Byron was spending some time um, in his role, his new uh, role um, as part of the development team. uh, And he had spent quite a bit of time um, with uh, Owen Beck uh, going through some video with him and giving him some, suggestions and and Owen Beck said um that that um Paul Byron had a incredible impact on his development this season uh crediting him a lot um so on uh, YouTube uh, at Habination said I would love to see uh Byron coaching in Laval. Mm. All right. That would be an interesting um I mean he's he'll be there as part of the development staff um but interesting, an interesting comment from Habinations. She26 always coming in with a, some some thoughtful comments as well. She says, what a great show this week. Listening to Byron's thoughts on Beck and Beck's on Byron to the Canadians and how they did in Prague to former Canadians, to coaches. And Chris G, if you're listening, our Rocket Sports colleague, Chris G, if you're listening, she says, and to the gentleman that you had on this episode and his opinions on the Canadians and Laval, I'll for sure want to listen to more of him. I thought he was awesome. Chris, um, you need to be on the podcast more often. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. We've got it. We've got a new fan for you. So that's a really nice compliment. Uh, you know, Chris G, yes, made a made an appearance uh, last week uh, to talk about uh, Laval with uh, a little bit and the world championship with, with Rick, but you find most of his coverage. Uh, he works with me as, uh, we, we partner up to cover all of the Laval rocket coverage throughout the season. He covers all of Laval's home games and does a great job. Um, and then she goes on to say, as far as the question of the week, I've been paying attention to the men's world and the playoffs. Come on Oilers fight, fight hard. And then in all caps, Fight harder than hard. I think she wants the Canadian team to win. Apparently, yeah. I think she does. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, thank you uh, both for your comments. Don't forget, we want to hear from you, uh, and we would love to be able to read your comments out on next week's show. Um, And uh, so what's coming up between now and then? Well, the Memorial Cup final, don't forget, taking place Sunday night at 7.30 p.m., the London Knights versus the Saginaw Spirit. I would love to see Owen Beck win it. That'd be great. And uh, we'll be watching. And and if you miss it, we'll be uh, telling you all about it next week on the Canadians Connection. That's right. Uh, Michael Spinella will be back in the hosting chair next week for the next Canadians Connection episode, which is which will happen on Saturday, June 8th, 2024. Don't forget, subscribe uh, so that you don't miss that or any other episode. We will have more special guests uh, who are draft experts coming up in uh, the week's as we whittle our way down to the NHL draft, you don't want to miss any of those. So be sure you are subscribed either to the app, uh, to the podcast itself or on our YouTube channel. And just thank you once again for listening to the Canadians Connection podcast right here on Rocket Sports Radio. Click subscribe so you never miss an episode of Canadians Connection. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Rocket Sports. Rocket Sports.